there. I want to thank you for joining me for episode 16 of Midmo Mama. My name is Ginny and I live in Sedalia, Missouri in the United States where I am making in the Midwest. I'm recording this video on Tuesday, October 13th for upload on Thursday, October 15th. My program is about, about yarn crafts and food and whatever else I decide I want to talk about. In today's episode, I have a finished object and I started something to, this time. And I made three cooks this time. I made a, let's see, what did I do? I did chicken with curry dill sauce. And I made two soups. I made a chunky beef noodle soup. And I made a marvelous mushroom soup. So if those things sound like stuff you're interested in, just stick around and we'll talk about them when we get there. Um, before I get on with my regular program, I do want to say to um, all of my giveaway winners, you've all claimed your prizes except for one person, um, Cam Bamford. You have not claimed your prize for my 100 subscribers giveaway. Um, be sure to reach out to me via email um, because I haven't been able to contact you. Uh, you have until November 18th to claim your prize and um, or, or you forfeit. So, uh, Kim Bamford, I hope you catch up on my programs and, uh, and reach out to me to claim your prize. But with that, let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Mama Crafts. And I have one finished object today and I'm excited. It's, it's a very nice thing. I made a hat. Isn't that wonderful? I'm gonna hold it up so you can see. I love this hat. I'm gonna try it on so you can see how it looks. It's not my hat. It's gonna be one of my boys' hats. So this is what it looks like, and it's a little bit slouchy in back. Um, he didn't ask for slouchy. I asked if he wanted something slouchy or more fitted, and he said more fitted. But I don't know how long, I don't know how long his head is from the top to his ears. And I know he wouldn't go measure. So I did the best I could. I figured maybe his head... You know, being a man, he might be a have a little bit bigger head than mine. So maybe it'll fit him just right. But on me, it slouches just a little bit. But it's a beautiful color, blue. I really like blue. I like all kinds of colors, actually. But this is a very nice color. But it's, it's, um, it's a very simple cap. Um, actually, the pattern... The pattern is called Yart, Y-A-R-T, Yart Simple Chemo Cap Slash Beanie by Natalia Elam. And it's very simple, it's just got a, a ribbed edge, and then it's all stocking it until you get to a certain point when you're ready to do the decreases, and then you decrease a little bit, and then you... Pull the yarn through, and it's all done. And it turned out, it turned out nicely. And I like it a lot. And hopefully, I think Cameron, I think Cameron's gonna get this one, because he's the first one to respond to me on how he wanted his hat fitted. My oldest boy hasn't responded to me yet, so. Maybe I'll hear from him or not. No. My boys have never really been hat wearers, but they live in Alaska. You would think that at some point they would, would want to wear a hat. But I lived in Alaska with them all those years, and I seldom wore a hat too. So I mean, You don't really need a hat in Alaska if you're not going to linger out 
side for long periods of time. If you're just running from a car to a house, from a car to a store, from a car to your job, you know, you know it's just like anywhere else. You, you just go quickly, you know, don't, don't linger around. And you really don't need hats and gloves and mittens, but... You know, it's good to have one just in case if you if you get broke down on the side of the road in the middle of winter, well, you might be thankful to have a hat to cover your ears with and stuff. So, so that's basically why I wore it, why I made it, and maybe 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 Cameron will wear this. But it's very cute. It's a very cute hat. And it didn't take very long for me to make it. I needed something that that was quick, cause I was having I was having difficulties in finding projects to stick with. Everything everything I had seemed like it would be like long term projects, and I just really really enjoyed picking this up. Um, it's Making a hat is a whole lot more satisfying now. Now that I'm learning how to make socks and stuff, a hat is a much more satisfying project, I think. That's not to say I'm not going to finish my socks, but I have put them aside. I haven't worked on them in a while. But let me show you the next thing I worked on. I worked on a gauge swatch for a project that, I'm, that I started this week and I think I talked, I'm pretty sure I talked about it last time because I wasn't sure how I liked my gauge swatch turned out so I think I talked about it but I I worked on my Huga shawl and I completed the gauge swatch I'm going to hold that up to you isn't that cute? It is very, very cute. And so I made I made the the single crochet gauge swatch. And then I took the kit colors that came in the kit and I followed the instructions on making the little heart shape with the in a like in a cross stitch embroidery pattern. And it made a heart. And so I decided to keep this. This is my my Huga mug rug. So I put it on my little table next to where I sit. And that's where I put my coffee mug down. My little kitty wants to jump up on the table. He keeps lurching, lunging. He keeps lunging up. And he thinks he's going to jump on the table. So if he jumps on the table, you might get to say hello to Boots. He he wants to jump up here, but I haven't I haven't given him enough space, and so he keeps leaping, but he doesn't he, he doesn't he's not getting there. Let me move so you move my box. I don't I'm not keeping my shawl in a bag. I have the little the kit, and so I haven't I haven't picked out a bag for this project. And I've been just knitting out of the kit. So, in fact, last night I went to knit night. And I'm like, oh, I really don't want to go downstairs and pick out a bag. So I grabbed the whole box and took it to knit night. <laughs> and they had fun looking at the yarn, my friends. Okay, Boots, you can come up here and say hello to my to my guest. You watch, he won't jump now that I'm letting him. He only wants to come up here when I don't want to. Okay, don't come up here. Don't you dare. Don't you come up here. See, if I pretend I don't want him up here, then he won't. Or that maybe he will. Here he comes. Look. See? This is my baby. He doesn't like me holding on to him. He's like, Mommy, don't. don't touch it. No, no, no. I don't want him to step on this. I All my visual aids fell on the floor. All because of my cat. Okay, Boots. Okay, Boots. 
We've all had enough of you now. Go, go play. Go lay down. You can't tell a cat to go lay down. They won't go. They won't go lay down. But that's okay. He can sniff around, and when he wants down, he'll let himself down. So, I finished the swatch, and it's a mug rug now. So I put my coffee cup on it in the morning, you know, when I'm home, you know, because I work in the morning sometimes. But I started the actual shawl, and I have the starting edge, and I have three rows of baubles, because that's what it starts out with, is baubles. So this is the front. And I have my um, heart-shaped um, progress keeper. This is supposed to indicate where the front of your garment is, or front of your project. And I have three colors so far. So I have this um, rosy, rosy reddish color here, and then I have a cream color, and then I have a golden, golden yellow right here. And so the next color I'm going to be adding as bubbles is this teal color. And that's going to go as a row of bubbles. And I'm going to use all my colors all the way through J because that's, that's what colors they are. A, A through J. And of course the gray is the stone wash. So... So I do this segment, and then I weave in my ends, and then I move on to the next segment. Because I'm going to do mine just the way the, the crochet along was done back in 2017. I, <clears throat> I've never done a crochet along. I've tried um, years ago when I was a loom knitter. I participated in a lot of loom alongs. Um, with the Loom Along group on Ravelry. But I, um, my cat has to inspect everything. Um, but yeah, I, I, I found that when I participate in alongs, I feel pressure. And it's, to me, it's not a healthy pressure, you know. You know, a lot of people, you know, people like challenges and stuff. And it's in that people are uh, motivated by challenges, but I'm not. I don't like pressure. I don't like people. I don't, I don't like feeling like I'm behind. I don't like the pressure of feeling like I have to keep in step with everybody else. Um... And plus, I, I don't know what it is about me, but I get my, I get my hackles up when, in, in group settings where everybody's doing the same thing. I say, I don't want to do it the same thing everybody else is. So, I don't do the along, but I wanted the kit because I wanted to make one. And so, I'm really pleased with this. Now, I, I'm, my kit's called the Jewel Kit. There were, well, there, they started out with three different um, color schemes, and then they ended up with a total of five because they added two more later on. But I got the, I didn't want the rainbow one, although it was beautiful. It was, it was probably the most popular um, one. But I liked the jewel kit and the pastel kit. So I got the jewel and the pastel, and then later on they came out with a mermaid kit, which was a lot of blues and greens. And then they came out with a girls' night out kit, which had um, pink stone wash and a series of colors. But I don't know. I don't know what the colors were. I don't remember. I, but I do remember that the the main color that used was pink. I think for the mermaid one, the, the main color was like a, a stonewash blue. Stonewash blue, I think. But anywho, 
I didn't get I didn't get either one of those. I got I got the jewel. And I don't know why I got two because the likelihood of me making a second one is very slim. So with that being said, you know, there may be a Huga kit available at some point. I'm not making any promises. If I this would probably be expensive to ship out, so I'll I'll let my um, I'll let my knit group friends have dibs on it if one of them wants the kit. I might offer them the kit. But we'll see. I don't know. I don't wanna I don't wanna make any promises about that pastel kit. But it is potentially a giveaway item, so we'll see. I haven't made any promises. I'm just I'm just thinking out loud at this point. We'll see. The pattern is still available. It's free on the um Sheepdis website. It's either the Sheepdis website or the Hack Marak Kirsten Ballerings website. Or it's all in a nutshell. I think that's your website too. Hack Marak. Hack Marak is her website. No, it's all in a nutshell. Sheep just is the yarn. The shawl was designed by Kirsten Ballering. And I but she's also known as Hack Marak. H A A K M A A K R A A K. But I think her website is called It's All in a Nutshell. At any rate, I'm I'm this far along, so so and I've been pretty much doing one set of bobbles and then the return row, and then another set of bobble, um, and then the next night I was doing another set of bobbles and the return row, and the last night I did this this third set of bobbles. And then the return row. It's going to be pretty. It is indeed. And this is my first time making bobbles. And they're not that hard. I do not think that, hard, that they're that hard. Now, I was reading a lot of people who made this. And they were all upset because the bobbles were on the other side of their work. Well, I think it's because people were confused about what was the right side and what was the wrong side. Because you have to put your, you have to put your little tag on here to indicate that that's the right side. And, and even though you're doing a row that was originally a right side row, you're doing it on the wrong side. But my bobbles are on the correct side of my work, so I'm not even, I'm not worried about that. But I remember that that was a really big deal. People were upset that their bobbles weren't poking through, but I haven't had problem with my bobbles not poking through. It is holy. It is a holy garment, but because it's cotton, cotton acrylic, it, well, it probably won't shrink or anything. But I was thinking when, if, if I washed it one time, everything would kind of tighten up a little maybe. But if it don't, it don't matter to me. I think it's going to be pretty when I'm done with it. But that's it. That's all I've been working on. I finished the hat and I've been working on the the, the Huga shawl. I named my project when I'm in Ravelry. I, I come up with my own creative name for my projects. And so... Because I didn't know how to pronounce Huga. Because it's not spelled the way I would pronounce it. 
because I would pronounce it high yi, right? But it's pronounced huga. So I named my project huga like a tuba. <laughs> I do dumb things. I don't know. I don't mind. People don't care. Nobody cares what I name my project. So I can huga like a tuba if I want to. And I like my hat and I like my mug rug. I guess I should talk about the yarns. So for the hat, I would take notes and then I, I didn't look at them. But the, the yarn that I used is um, Heartland by Lion Brand Yarn. And the colorway is Olympic. And then um, the Huga Shawl, the gray is um the, the kit is the jewel kit and it's sheep just stonewash i got uh 10 of these and then 11 balls of various colors of katona which is i think if i'm not mistaken it's that mercerized cotton yeah it's that 100 percent mercerized cotton and that's what the baubles are made of. So. so that's a very nice project. I've been enjoying making those baubles. And I figure by the time I'm about getting sick of making the baubles, it'll be over. Until I get to the opposite end. Because it's a mirror image. You, you, you get to a certain point, then you make a center pattern, and then you go back the other way in reverse order. So... I'm using my Clover Amore 7 hook. There's my Clover Amore 7. And I don't think I'm going to put it in a bag. I might just keep it in, in the box. That way everything's together. I got my scissors in there. I got my highlighter in there, I have my pattern in there, so that's good. So that's it for, for Mama Crafts, so let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Mama's Pattern Showcase. This time I'm going to show you two crochet patterns and three knit patterns. And what I do, in case you're, you're new to my show, I go on Ravelry and I look at the Ravelry Top 20. And I find the ones that are not available, that are, that are available via other means. And um, let you know about them. So the first pattern... Um, like I said, it's time for me to do two crochet and three knit, because I did three crochet and two knit last time. So, the first pattern I would like to showcase is called, uh, and it's always my luck, I always end up with a pattern that I don't know to print, how to pronounce it, so please forgive me if I don't say this correctly. But you can look at my show notes and find the links to these patterns. Um, and you can pronounce them on your own. <laughs> but the first pattern is called... Spumigli Hooded Cowl. And it's by Rebecca Haas. And it is number one on the Crochet Top 20 on Ravelry. It is... $3 on Ravelry, but you can get it for free at Rebecca Haas's website. So I have a link to her pattern and to her website. And you can check out her, her, um, her cowl. Um, it's a crochet cowl, and she used Yarn Bee Lux Lollies, which is an errand way. I have Lux Lollies. I wonder if she used the same colorway I bought. I don't know. It's kind of like a pastel. But if you uh, if you have any of the Yarn Bee Luxe Lollies, which is an errand weight, I'm not sure 
It's, it's 100% acrylic, but it's super soft. I remember that, and it's on a wheel. It's like a sugar wheel, only it's it's um, softer. It's got more of a fuzzy feel to it. Um, she uses an H 5 millimeter hook. And she calls for 500 to 550 yards, made one size using U.S. Code Shade terminology. Um, this beginner friendly cowl works up quickly, making a soft, fluffy, and wonderfully snuggly cowl that is deep enough to be pulled up into a hood. This cowl features a puffed shell stitch and includes a full tutorial for making that stitch. The puffs in the shell add an extra element of fluffiness to an already soft and luxurious cowl. So check out her website if you want to get the free pattern. Otherwise you can buy it for $3 on Ravelry. And it's a very adorable cowl and pretty pictures. What a lovely lady she is. The next pattern for the crochet showcase, show, pattern showcase, is called the J.W. Anderson Crochet Cardi by Zines and Roger, and it's number three on the Crochet Top 20. It's a free pattern on their website, on the Zines, Zines and Roger website. Um, it's a crochet cardigan using Aran weight yarn and a hook size J, which is a 6 millimeter. It's available in both US and UK crochet terminology. It's a patchwork cardigan. So you make various different squares of any color, pattern, shape, well not shape, but you make them all squares, but you can make them in any color scheme. And then you bring them all together for a patchwork um, cardigan. Uh, it says this pattern is within a written blog post and YouTube video. Um, they have all the info you need to make your own Harry Styles cardigan. Included is the chart for laying out the squares and a chart for the color work squares. The video includes a couple of tutorials for <clears throat> trickier bits as well as general guidance for construction. There is also advice on sizing up and down. I made mine in a selection of Aran weight yarns, all different brands and different fiber contents. It is a proper stash buster. That is very, very neat. It's not really something that I would gravitate toward, but it's very, very popular. And because it's patchwork, you can do whatever you want to it. it. It's very, very, very versatile pattern. So even if you look at it and you think, "Oh, I don't, I don't think I would wear that," you know, never judge a, never judge a pattern by the colors ever, because it could be a very, very good pattern. You just you know, the colors just don't appeal to you, but that does not make mean that the pattern is faulty by any means. So, so never, never judge a pattern by its colors. That's, that's just, that's just, because I don't have to tell you guys that, you know. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. <laughs> So, but check out that pattern. It's on their website at Zines and Roger. And I think you'll enjoy at least taking a look at it. But it's a very roomy, very roomy, very baggy. Um, it's an oversized cardigan. And it looks really, really nice. 
So there's that. So that's it for the two crochet patterns on the pattern showcase. So um, the th three, knit, three knit patterns. Um, the first pattern is called the Descent Socks by Tina Koo. It's number four on the Knitting Top 20. It's free on Ravelry, but it's also free on a website called Payhip. I've never heard of that before, Payhip. So it must be new because I have two patterns featured in the knit segment that is available through Payhip. So um, check this out. So this is Descent Socks. They're knitted, of course. And they use needle size zero, which is a two millimeter, and they use a US one and a half, which is a 2.5 millimeter needles. These socks are available in small, medium slash large, and extra large. So there's three sizes, okay? Um, so this sock pattern, the, dis the, the descent socks were designed in honor of the memory and legacy of the late U.S. Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, <clears throat> She said she's utterly grateful to two people for the technical editing of the pattern. She says it's designed for any fingering weight yarns. The instructions are written in metric and U.S. terminology. Instructions written for magic loop, but DPNs can be used as well. It's knitted, they're knitted cuff down. They're available in three sizes. Small, which is 60 stitches, medium large, which is 70 stitches, and extra large, which is 80 stitches. Um, provisional cast on and a folded cuff, a short row heel with many, many gussets, charts, but no written instructions for the stranded color work patterns. So just be aware of that. But, um, Again, it is free on Ravelry, but it is also free on Payhip. So that's Descent Socks by Tina Koo. K-U-U. K with two U's at the end. And her name Tina has got two I's in it. T-I-I-N-A. So Tina Koo. All right. And did I tell you that one was number four on the Knitting Top 20? I don't remember if I said so. So the next pattern I would like to showcase is called the Slouchy Sampler Sweater by Melissa Leapman. Leapman, L-E-A-P-M-E-A-N, is number seven on the Knitting Top 20. It is a free pattern on the Lion Brand Yarn website. And this sweater is very, very unique. It is a slouchy sampler sweater that is knitted using Lion Brand LB Collection Merino Yak Alpaca yarn in Aran weight using a US 7 needle, which is the 4.5 millimeter. This sweater's pattern is available in four sizes, small, medium, large, and extra large. And there's not much, there's no narrative for it, but the, pack, the pictures are very, very interesting. Um, especially the back, of, well, the back and the front. Because you have, it, you have some cables that go all the way from bottom to top. But then you have some cables that go part way up, and then there's a lace pattern up over on the side, and does it, and it does it over the shoulder. I think this would be good for someone who gets bored easily, <clears throat> and like something that challenges their, um, you know, challenges them. 
to, to pay attention. So I think that's a good pattern. I, I'd be willing to go for something like that. Just so you know, November is Nano Swaymo, which is um, National um, National Knit a Sweater Month. Yeah, National Knit a Sweater Month. And I've I've participate I I participate in that every November. I have no expectation to ever finish a sweater in 30 days. Um, I just don't have that kind of time. People who people who can stay home and craft every day with no chores and no, not you know not have to cook for their family and stuff like that, they they all manage to do it. <laughs> but if you work full time and you have a family to feed and you do all the chores in your house and all that stuff, you, you're not gonna have time to make a sweater. Well, okay. I'm generalizing, aren't I? And that's not the true of everybody. But, okay, so I'm going to speak for myself <laughs> and not try to speak for other people. I cannot, I cannot do a sweater in the month of November. But I, but in honor of, because I believe in, I believe in the spirit of the idea. So I always work on a sweater in November. And I have one that's a whip that I started last November, and I think I'm going to rip it out and start over. So you'll, you'll get to see that next month when I when I get working on it. So my back, I'll probably start pulling it out and trying to decide what I'm going to do yarn-wise. But I'll talk more about that when that comes. I'm doing my pattern showcase, and I'm getting distracted. So... Anyway, if you want to look at that slouchy sampler sweater, um, go to the Lion Brand Yarn website and look it up and uh, you'll see the free pattern there. It's a very beautiful sweater. And the model, the model has, she's um, modeling it with a, a full skirt. Uh, so it's, it's very lovely. I think it would be appropriate for work. Finally, on Mama's Pattern Showcase, I would like to tell you about a shawl called Sullivan by Emily Stamets. And it's number 12 on the Knitting Top 20. It is $6 on Ravelry, but it is $3 on Payhip. And it is a knitted shawl using light fingering US 5's which is 3.75 millimeter needles using 480 to 550 yards it's, it's a one size um, shawl it's more like a shawlette it's, well it's a shawl it's just not a big shawl I guess it's a I don't know what I would consider it a shawlette, but it doesn't matter what I would consider it. So, <clears throat> so this pattern by Emily Stamets, she says, pay what works. To invest in this pattern at full price, simply add it to your cart. To invest in this pattern at $3, use code EQUITY50 at checkout. To receive this pattern for free, use code EQUITY100 at checkout. This payment model allows me to create a more sustainable business and to invest more with independent dyers and fiber makers while making my patterns available to everyone in accordance with their means. Thank you for your support. So Sullivan is a semicircular shawl worked top down and flat. Catherine D. Sullivan is a geologist and oceanographer, a former NASA astronaut, the first U.S. woman to do a spacewalk, and the first woman to descend to the Challenger Deep. 
She is the first human ever to visit both space and the deepest known part of Earth's oceans. This show is inspired by Kathy's adventures to the extremes of human travel. It plays on the echoes between deep sea and deep space. You'll begin with the moon, our most familiar celestial object, and the force behind the movement of the oceans. From there, trails of islets radiate outward, drawing on the visual similarities between stars and bubbles. You'll finish with a simple lace that can be interpreted as both the cloud around the rocket blast and the froth under a sea diving vessel as it descends. <clears throat> the final few rows return you to the texture of the moon, this time in a wave formation. A reminder that all things are connected no matter how far apart they seem. This pattern has been professionally tech edited and test knit. And it gives you a list of all the particulars as far as yarn, needles, gauge, finished size, other materials, skill level, skills. This shawl uses common stitches and, is such, and as such is accessible to beginning knitters. The pattern repeats are difficult to memorize, so this pattern is best for knitters comfortable following charts or detailed written instructions, or those who want to practice those skills. So the pattern is written, all sections, and then it's also charted for three of the five sections. So there you go. So in order to recap the pattern showcase, the two crochet patterns was uh, Spomigli Hooded Cowl by Rebecca Haas and J.W. Anderson Crochet Cardi by Zines and Roger. And then the three knit patterns was Descent Socks by Tina Koo, Slouchy Sampler Sweater by Melissa Liebman, and Sullivan by Emily Stamets. So that concludes Mama's Pattern Showcase. Let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Mama Cooks. And guess what? I cooked three things since the last time I saw you guys. I The first thing I made was called Chicken with Curry Dill Sauce. And it was okay. Um, the recipe said that I needed to get six bone-in, skin-on, uh, chicken breast halves. But my store was out of breasts. So I had to get bone-in, skin-on thighs. Which was fine for me because I prefer dark meat anyway. But my husband prefers white meat. But because, you know, but he'll eat dark meat if he has to, but he doesn't prefer it. But the only thing that I had trouble with, because you cook your, your chicken with the skin on, which is something that I always used to love. I used to love chicken skin. But I, I ate it this time and I didn't really care for the chicken skin. So I guess my tastes have changed somewhat over the years. So, um, but it was fine once I peeled the, the skin off because, you know, my, the thighs were very, very meaty and had plenty of meat on them. But, you know, the sauce was on the chicken and since I pulled the skin off of it, all the flavor went with the skin, although, you know, because, because it was thigh meat and it was, you know, juicy it was good it was it was fine so if you like chicken skin I recommend it 
Otherwise, do it boneless, maybe, and you, you know, maybe you still get good results um, using this recipe. So I might try that another time. Try with the boneless breasts or boneless thighs, and see if they come out any better. But I'm really disappointed because I really used to love chicken skin. I like chicken skin on fried chicken. I guess maybe it just depends on how the chicken is cooked. Huh. But I got the recipe from this one. I'm still working on this book because I'm really liking most of the recipes. So all three of the recipes that you're going to see is on the Best of Country Cook Cooking Year 2000. And, um, and so... Here's how I made chicken with curry dill sauce. For chicken with curry dill sauce, you will need two tablespoons butter, two tablespoons all-purpose flour, one eighth teaspoon salt, dash of pepper, one cup milk, quarter cup mayonnaise, half teaspoon dill weed, quarter teaspoon curry powder, six bone-in chicken breast halves. I used six bone-in chicken thighs, one tablespoon vegetable oil. In a saucepan over medium heat, melt butter. Add the flour, salt, and pepper. Stir until smooth. Gradually add milk and bring to a boil. Boil and stir for two minutes. Remove from the heat. Add the mayonnaise, dill, and curry. Stir until smooth. Set aside. In a skillet, over medium heat, brown chicken in oil. Place in a greased, shallow, three-quart baking dish. Pour sauce over chicken. Bake uncovered at 350 degrees for 50 to 60 minutes or until meat juices run clear. This dish makes six servings and I served mine with green beans and... The next recipe that I tried was I started making soup on Thursday nights. Because I'm home Thursday nights and I have time to cook. And I've had a hankering for soup. So for this month I've been cooking soup on Thursdays. So last Thursday... I made a chunky beef noodle soup and it was absolutely delicious. So much flavor, a little bit tangy, um, and it was really, really good. It was really, really good. Um, let's see, I, let me see if I substituted anything. Yes, it called for a ten and a half ounce can of um, beef consomme. Campbell's makes it, condensed beef consomme. They didn't have any at my store, so I looked online to find a good substitute for a beef consomme, and they suggested beef stock. Well, they had one container of beef stock. They had broth, but they didn't recommend broth that was stock. So they had one container of stock, and I snatched that thing up. Um... So that was the only thing. Oh, and they wanted me to use fresh parsley. I don't keep, I don't keep fresh herbs on hand at all. So I used two tablespoons of dried parsley flakes instead of a quarter cup of, you know, fresh parsley. But other than that, I followed the directions, um, just the way they were written out, and it turned out real good. So here's how I made. Chunky Beef Noodle Soup For Chunky Beef Noodle Soup, you will need one pound 
boneless round steak cut into half inch cubes, one medium onion chopped, two garlic cloves minced, one tablespoon vegetable oil, two cups water, one can 14 and a half ounces diced tomatoes undrained, one can 10 and a half ounces condensed beef consomme undiluted. I didn't have any consomme at my store so I had to use beef stock instead and I used about 12 ounces. Two teaspoons chili powder, one teaspoon salt, half teaspoon dried oregano, one cup uncooked spiral pasta, one medium green pepper chopped, quarter cup minced fresh parsley. I didn't use fresh, I used dried parsley flakes and I only used two tablespoons. In a large saucepan, cook round steak, onion, and garlic in oil until the meat is browned and the onion is tender, about five minutes. Stir in water, tomatoes, consomme or stock, and seasonings. Bring to a boil. Reduce heat, cover, and simmer until meat is tender, about one and a half hours. Stir in pasta and green pepper. Simmer uncovered until noodles are tender, about eight minutes. Add parsley and your soup is ready to serve. This makes eight servings or two quarts. I hope you enjoy the chunky beef noodle soup. And finally, the last thing that I cooked was two Thursdays ago, I made marvelous mushroom soup. And um, it was really delicious too. Let me look and see. I don't think I did anything different. Nope, I did everything the way um, the recipe called for, which was really good. Um, it was a creamy soup. It was a creamy mushroom soup and it used half and half in evaporated milk. Um, for the richness in it. I didn't do anything different. I followed everything the way it was. It called for two cans, 14 and a half ounces of beef broth. But if I'm not mistaken, I had one of those containers of it. So, um, so I don't think I used cans. If I'm not mistaken, I, I, that was two Thursdays ago. I've slept a few times since then, so now I don't remember what I did. But I'm pretty sure I followed the directions 100%. So, I remember it was really delicious. It was really creamy. Um, I don't think I cooked my mushrooms long enough. They were a little bit... A little bit... Chewy? I don't know what word I'm looking for. But I don't think I cooked my mushrooms long enough. You're supposed to saute them, um, you know, early in the process. And I don't, I don't think I sauteed them long enough. But even still, it was a really delicious soup. Audrey and I enjoyed it. I don't, I, I make, I make the soup night on, and I, I know Scott's not going to be around because he doesn't like soup. He doesn't like vegetables, and soup is something that I'm not going to substitute. You know, if it's got, if it calls for vegetables, I'm putting the vegetables in them. Otherwise, you might as well just eat hot water. It's soup. It's supposed to have vegetables and stuff in it. So, so, but we enjoyed it. We enjoyed our marvelous mushroom soup, and I think we had bread, bread with it. So, this is how I made Marvelous Mushroom Soup. For Marvelous Mushroom Soup, you will need half a pound fresh mushrooms sliced, one large onion, finely chopped, 
one garlic clove minced, half a teaspoon dried tarragon, quarter teaspoon ground nutmeg, three tablespoons butter, quarter cup all-purpose flour, two cans, 14 and a half ounces each of beef broth. I used the one in the one quart container and I used an equivalent amount. One cup, eight ounces sour cream, quarter or half a cup, half and half cream, half a cup evaporated milk, one teaspoon lemon juice, a dash of hot pepper sauce, and salt and pepper to taste. In a Dutch oven or soup kettle, saute the mushrooms, onion, garlic, tarragon, and nutmeg in butter until vegetables are tender. Stir in flour until smooth. Gradually add broth, bring to a boil, stirring constantly. Reduce heat to low, slowly add sour cream. Cook and stir until smooth. Stir in cream and milk. Add lemon juice, hot pepper sauce, salt and pepper. Heat through, but, new, but do not boil. This soup six, serves six people, and I served mine with saltine crackers. I hope you enjoy Marvelous Mushroom Soup. And now it's time for Mama Reads. I finished a book, I finished Died in the Wool, uh, Knit and Nibble Mystery Number 2 by Peggy Earhart. I have to show you a picture of it because I already loaned it out to my knitting friends. Uh, I, took, I took the first and second book and uh, I uh, let Elizabeth have one and I let Julie have one so so hopefully they're enjoying the books and then when they get done they can trade because you don't have to read them in order uh, I didn't I didn't see anything in book two that you that you felt like you would have had to know what happened in book one I didn't I didn't think that that was a problem so um, so yeah so one of my friends took took a murder she knit and the other friend took died in the wool and hopefully they'll enjoy those stories um i have my bible study tomorrow and it's the last lesson in this one it is called fatal distractions conquering destructive temptations um by k arthur and David and B.J. Lawson, and we're we're going to do the last last lesson tomorrow is on greed. We've been learning about six of the seven what they call the seven deadly sins, and so the one that we didn't that we're not is um, that they didn't cover in here was lust. And there was a reason for that. Why did she say? Because there are so many other books on that topic she didn't feel like it was necessary to go over it, since there's so many other resources to discuss lust. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, she says, we've decided to omit the seventh sin of lust because we already have multiple Bible studies on the problem of sexual sin, including the truth about sex and the 40-minute study, what does the Bible say about sex? So she's already done a couple of studies on sex. So she didn't feel like she needed to add lust to this one. So that's why we focused on... 
pride, anger, jealousy, gluttony, slothfulness, and greed. I have trouble with my L's. I'm sorry. My, my tongue just doesn't work most of the time. But anyway, tomorrow's our final se section, and then we get to start a new, um, a new Bible study um, in a couple weeks. So, there's that. And I'm almost finished with this wonderful book. This is called Hadley Beckett's Next Dish. And it is by um, Bethany Turner. And um, my girlfriend Elizabeth from Knit Night is having a first time, one time book club on this book. Um, she was able to get a a book club hostess kit um, through the publisher, and so and there's um, me and several of her other friends um, are on board, and I'm almost finished. I um, I finished through chapter 25, and I have just this much more to go. Very little. Um, and we're going to meet on Saturday and have a book club discussion about the book. And, you know, nice little get together and I'll get to meet some of her friends and stuff. So I'm looking forward to the get together. I really enjoyed this book. Um, she and I talked about it a little bit before, before getting together or, um, you know, last night and or a couple weeks ago. Yeah, a couple weeks ago she was saying there was not as much cooking in it as I thought it was. It's more of a it's definitely more of a romance than uh cooking, but it all it is it it does I mean they're both cooking personalities. But it is more of a romance than a kitchen drama. But I find it entertaining. I thought it was a cute little um, story. And I think the characters are likable. And I'm, I, I, I thought it was good. I just think it's a good story and um, I'm looking forward to the discussion coming up. But I'm almost done with it. I should be done with it in a couple days. And then I'll get started on something else. That's it. That's all I'm reading currently. Except for Bible Bible reading. I'm doing, I'm, I'm doing actually a couple of different plans. I'm, I'm doing a one year chronological read through the Bible. And um, I'm also reading a proverb a day. Um, and another reading plan. But I don't track that reading, you know, uh, that's, you know, that's just something I do on the side, but, but that's it, that's all I'm reading, so let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Movie Mama, and I've watched two movies, um, since the last time. Um, when I, when I made the Marvelous Mushroom Soup, my daughter and I watched Meet Me in St. Louis. <sighs> Meet Me in St. Louis is my all-time, all-time favorite movie in the whole wide world. I, she and I, I've kind of turned her on to it as well. But if she ever wants to hang out with me and and spend some time with me, she'll say, Do you want to watch Meet Me in St. Louis? And the answer is always yes. Yes, I do. I want to watch Meet Me in St. Louis. <laughs> so that one was done in 1944. It has Judy Garland and Margaret O'Brien and Mary Astor in it. And it's just... It's romantic, and it's got singing, and dancing, and entertainment, 
and I just love it. I just love it. I just love it. And it takes place in St. Louis, and guess where I live? I live in Missouri. I don't live in St. Louis. And the other movie that I watched um, this past couple weeks was called Second Chances from 2013. It had Allison Sweeney and Greg Braun and Edward Asner in it. It was a Hallmark movie. We, we, we canceled our <clears throat> membership with Netflix which freed up a little bit of money to find another streaming service. And I found a streaming service called Friendly TV. Friendly TV if it's F R N D L Y TV. They have three Hallmark channels on there. It's the regular Hallmark, Hallmark Murder Murders and Mysteries, and Hallmark Drama, plus it's got a couple of other movie channels, one's called Pixel, and another one's called, I don't know, can't think of it, but there's various other channels in there, there's like 15 channels that we can watch, and there's three levels, we got the middle, middle level. So, um, the basic plan was like $6 a month, and the middle plan was like $10 a month, and then the other one was like 12 or $13 a month or something like that. We went with the middle plan. And I think it's going to be good. I'm going to get to watch a bunch of Hallmark, because I don't have... I have, we have Fire Stick, but we have a hard time getting the Hallmark channel. So I figured we just use the app and then I can watch all the Hallmark I want. So I'll be watching more Hallmark movies in the days and weeks to come. So, so if, if, if you like to watch Hallmark movies and you have some that you would like to recommend, and by all means, I ask that you recommend them. Same with books. If you have books that you like to read, recommend them. I can't promise I'll, I'll read them all. But I'll try to work them in. My, my to-read list is just... It's not unmanageable, but... You know, the stuff on my to-read list is stuff that I, I really do intend to read because I, I have the book. Um, so if I don't already have the book, it, I'm, I'm less inclined to get it, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to read it. So go ahead and recommend away, and if you got something that you really, really loved, then let me know, and I just might check it out. So let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Miscellaneous Mama. And let's see, is this, this is just the part where I just tell you about stuff. The only thing that we've done lately, um, last Friday, our um, town, you know, you know we live in Sedalia, Missouri. So our town, um, celebrated 160 years of the town and for its 150th anniversary they produced a documentary about the history of Sedalia. So this past Friday because it was 160 years the Parks and Recreation had an outdoor, they called it History Under the Stars at Liberty Park. And so they had this inflatable um, um, outdoor um, video screen and they they broadcasted, broadcasted, I guess they broadcasted the documentary on the screen and it was outside 
It was fun. We went we went to um, the gas station and we got ourselves a couple of sodas and then we went to Pizza Hut and we got those new calzones. Those calzones are delicious. So I got the supreme one and Scott got the meat one. And so we had our soda and we had our pizza and we had our lawn chairs and we went to the park and we set up our 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 chairs and we sat down and then they started the movie at seven and it was a two and a half hour documentary people. It was long. It was interesting. It was very, very interesting. Because it went all the way back from, you know, the 1800s when it was first founded all the way until now. And so, it was very fascinating, but it was very long. It was very long. But, um, something that our, our town of Sedalia is known for, a couple of things, is, um, the famous ragtime composer, Scott Joplin was living in Sedalia um, when he wrote his most popular tune, The Maple Leaf Rag. So that was important. Um, also, um, we have a company here, it's called Interstate Studios. They are the largest American company that does the yearbook school pictures for yearbooks. Um, they they were established way back in the 40s. My husband works for that company. Um, he's a, he's a network um, engineer for Interstate Studio, but um, but they're they're the biggest um, school picture um, company in the nation, and they're right here right here in Sedalia, Missouri. And they have various other um, industries here. Um, when it first got started, this was a big, big railroad town. I mean, a very big railroad town. And then that kind of phased out. But, uh, but yeah, the, entry, the, the history of Sedalia was very, very interesting. And it was, only, it was only toward the end where it was starting to get kind of long. But that's okay, and it was still interesting. And I learned a lot about the town I live in. Um, we are not born and raised here in Sedalia. We, we've only lived here since 2014. So it was very really interesting to learn a little bit about our town. But that's it, that's really the highlight of the last couple of weeks, you know. I've been going to knit night, and going to church, and, um, Things like that. We're, we still, we still remain fairly healthy. There, there's a couple of people that we do know who have COVID now. This, 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 but these are the first people that we actually know who, who have it. So, um, so we're all just trying to be extra careful and, you know, try not to expose ourselves to people and things. But, you know, so far so good. Um, but that's about it. My next episode will be available on November 5th, so watch out for that. And, um, oh, I participated in I Love Yarn Day last Saturday, which was, um, November 10th, or October 10th, was I Love Yarn Day. So I took, so I had got double bunch of yarn on me and take pictures of me. So I'll post some of those up on my video. So you can see me loving my yarn on I Love Yarn Day. And, um, uh, yeah, I'll be recording my next video on Election Day. So I encourage everyone to go out and vote. I know, I know the people, I don't know, you probably, you, you probably already figured it out by now. I haven't, I haven't been real vocal about politics and I really don't want to turn my, 
program into politics, but I am, you know, I am conservative, and I do feel like our United States Constitution is under attack. And no, I am not military anymore, but I did take an oath to defend our nation against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And I'm telling you folks, this, this election, it is not about race. This election is not about a virus. This election is about standing up for and defending the Constitution of the United States of America. And there is a segment in our, in our nation who hates America and wants to get rid of the Constitution of this great nation. And so I am going to vote conservative this, this time. I haven't always voted conservative. But I feel like our Constitution is at stake, people. And this is how serious it is in my mind. So you may disagree with me. I'm not telling you, my viewers, how to vote. Um, you vote however your conscience um, allows you to vote. But this is not a popularity contest. This is... A, this is um, there's so much more to it than whether or not you like or dislike the candidates involved. There's, there's, there's more stuff deeper down in there than just what's happening with, among race and what's happening among, you know, with this virus. So, um, you know, make sure you're doing your research. Make sure you're checking up on the people that you are voting for and make sure you vote you know the best you can get out if you can um, but don't blow this off because our our nation depends on it um, the future of our of our of our lives is at stake I feel like so but that's it I'm not going to tell you what to do um, but I know what I'm going to do, so everyone, let's all be responsible and get out there and, and vote, because uh, it's very important. So let's move on to the next segment. I want to thank you for joining me today. I know that watching my show is a choice, and I am thankful that you have decided to share a portion of your valuable time with me. Um, if you enjoyed what you saw today, I encourage you to click the subscribe button. All that does is make it more easy for you to find me the next time you want to watch my show. Um, episodes are posted on the first and third Thursday of every month, but if you click on that notification bell, it will um, automatically send you a notice whenever I upload a video. Um, if you want to ask me any questions, you can always ask them down below in the comments or you can send me an email at midmomama2 at gmail.com. I can also be found on Instagram at midmomama1. I have a private account, but if you have, if, if you, if you follow me and I see that you have, you know, yarn and knitting and crochet and food or animals or whatever on your feed, then I will add you as a friend too and we can be friends on Instagram. Um, I am on Ravelry as Midmo Mama. And, um, I always say Stitch Zone, but I don't hang out there. But if you find me, you can be friends with me on Stitch Zone, too. And you can be friends with me on Ravelry if you want to. Um, 
That's good. I, I'm, I'm on there. I, I maintain my projects on Ravelry. And I, deal, I still do like the Bakery Bears um, Ravelry group. So, I, you know, I, I go on there from time to time. I just, I just don't hang out on there as much as I used to. Because, well, because one, I know they don't want me there. And I don't go, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't cause trouble. You know, I never did before. But I know that, I know I'm not wanted there, so I don't, I don't mingle on there, not like I used to, so, but that's okay. People are allowed to have whoever they want, and if they don't want me around, then, then that's fine. My feelings aren't hurt. But until next time, may God bless you. Bye.